Hey, good morning everybody. Matt Zerby here from Wasco Nursery coming to you from a nice uh, sunny Saturday morning. Going to be uh, high 70s, low 80s today. And I'm standing here next to uh, what you might consider a uh, mountain of mulch. And uh, the reason that I wanted to show you this is because this is about how much mulch I'm seeing some of our uh, friends, neighbors, customers putting on their plants. Well, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I'm going to turn the camera around. And I wanted to show you this, uh, this hydrangea right here. So this was a hydrangea that a customer purchased uh, four years ago. Not even, it was uh, about three and a half years ago. And it was a vanilla strawberry hydrangea. And you can see a little bit of life left in the plant right over here. But the plant was mostly dead and the customer pulled it out of the ground and uh, brought it into me to find out why it died or why it was dying. And I'm going to point that out. You can see that there is no bark on this plant all the way up here and all of that right there. And when I start to look over here, I know this is going to be hard to tell in the uh, in the video, but this is very spongy. In fact, you can kind of see the way I can push into that uh, right there. It's really spongy. And if I turn the plant over and we kind of look, the customer had the plant stems buried in mulch all the way up to right here. So if this plant was in the ground, the mulch was all the way around its stems and the, its little trunks there, and it was up about three and a half, four inches. So sometimes you'll hear us talk about, um, we've written articles, there's been some articles in the, uh, in the newspaper, and sorry about my bad camera work. Um, there's been some articles in the newspaper, we've written some of them, uh, Morton Arboretum, some of the conservation groups, all sorts of people saying, please don't volcano mulch your trees, that type of thing. But it's also just as important on shrubs that mulch not come in contact with the stems or trunks of the plants. So on shrubs like hydrangea, burning bush, viburnum, uh, lilacs, all of those kind of things, when you're dumping mulch around it, and since this is probably one of the prime weekends for mulching, I wanted to make sure that I gave you some really good information. When you're mulching plants, you want to keep uh, an inch or so gap between the base of the plant, whether it's a tree, a shrub, even a perennial. Uh, what you know, if it's a cone flower, um, uh, liatris, hostas, anything like that, you don't want mulch piled up right next to the plant, right on top of its stems, or even sometimes I'll see people dump a wheelbarrow right into the plant, and so the mulch gets caught all up in between all of the individual stems. And then what happens is you end up with a problem uh, real similar to this hydrangea that I showed you. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions about uh, how to mulch properly, uh, plant care, things like that, let me know. Um, in general, we recommend a, um, a good, good quality mulch. This is our uh, premium hardwood mulch. It's mostly oak and hickory bark. It's been twice shredded. It's fairly fine. It tends to mat together really nicely and hold in place. So especially if you have areas that are um, uh, sloped or have water running through them, this will stay put a lot better than some of the other mulches out there. And then I'll just kind of show you right over here. This is a little more coarse mulch. This is called double ground. Um, so this is uh, not all bark. There's bark and wood and it's been double ground and uh, chipped up and then composted a bit. This is also really nice stuff. It's a little more coarse, so it lets water through it more. It will float or wash away a little bit. If you have that uh, as an issue, you might want to stick with the premium hardwood. Um, in general, we recommend mulching no more than two to three inches thick. Um, a nice layer of mulch will insulate the soil during the winter time. It will insulate the soil during the summertime to keep some moisture in the ground. It will help a little bit to prevent weeds but um, it's not going to prevent weeds a lot if you put your mulch down four or five or six inches thick that will prevent a lot of weed growth but that will also hinder the plant growth so we don't recommend that at all and then lastly a lot of our customers especially people with perennial gardens rose gardens uh, vegetable gardens of course um, love our blended compost so our blended compost is uh, mushroom composted, composted leaf material, and um, some composted pine bark fines and a little bit of uh, hardwood fines. So it's a really good mix. It's been blended and screened, so there's no pop bottles or soda cans or uh, all sorts of twine and stuff in there, which is common among uh, compost vendors. So uh, this is our blended compost. It also is a great soil amendment, so you can mix that into the soil uh, for vegetable gardens or perennial gardens. Uh, we add that to every landscape project that we 
install uh, for perennials, vines, roses, grasses, ground covers. We till that into the soil. It's fantastic for vegetable gardens as well, but it does work as a mulch too. So you can put a nice little layer of an inch or two uh, thick blended compost on top of your soil. That'll help add some, uh, some good organic compounds uh, to the soil and uh, will, help, uh, will help all of your plants. So I hope that's some good information for you. The garden center is open from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. tonight, and we'd look forward to seeing you.